Welcome to Wednesday Comics. Brought to you by RootsOfTheSwampThing.com and Supercon 2018 Return of the Con. Everyone, keep turning those pages. Welcome to Wednesday Comics. To my right, we have a uh, robot uh, man himself, Alex. How you doing? Hello, everyone. And well, that's not right. And across from me, uh, we have Negative Man himself, uh, Garrett. How you doing? I'm horrible. Is that why I'm Negative Man? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, that's they why said you're a naked man. man. Oh, naked man. Hey, you ever seen uh, a, what's that called? Uh, can you think of it? a kickstand? <laughs> I invented it. I just lean over. Who are you? Uh, and I am uh, Crazy Jane herself, Marvin. Uh, this is Wednesday Comics Podcast. Uh, we review comic books every week. This week we got some uh, some bangers out there. We're going to talk about them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> just This is 2019. What's a yeah. banger? A banger? You know what a banger is? You're, you're the English one out is of Is that us. from you, the 50s? No, it's... When a song is good, it's called a banger. Mm, must be like dabbing. You got bangers out there. Bangers, a bop. You dab your nose off a banger. If I said, if I say that shit slaps, what does that mean? Jeez. Good, dude. Fifties. <laughs> no, it is. A dude. <laughs> Jeez, you should know that. That's your generation. Uh, what is That's the guy's podcast? Know. What? That's where they you know it then. Yeah, but I'm hip. You're hip. You're yeah. hippity hoppity. Hip hop. Hip hop anonymous. Yeah. Um, yeah you give him all the easy ones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, first of, by the way, your names are from Doom Patrol. Yes. I was telling uh, Garrett that I uh, uh, dived into DC Universe and I watched Doom Patrol episode one. Pretty good. I'm surprised by how much uh, I enjoyed it. It's very different, even though we read a little bit of Doom Patrol. It's very different than what I thought. Um, the humor's good. There's a couple things that weren't, eh, but it's the pilot episode. I, I would imagine maybe it gets better. Um, but overall, I was surprised. Looks like it costs a lot of money. And then the reveal that uh, Swamp Thing got cut by three episodes, and I, because uh, when I was watching, I was like, "How do they make money on this? Right. Like, there's no way that app costs eight bucks, <laughs> or, or you know what I mean?" Uh, and it looks like they spend a couple of million dollars on that thing. Dudes. Um, but yeah, it was good. Brendan Fraser, pretty great in it. Uh, he's Robot Man, right? He's Robot Man. <laughs> uh, Matthew Donner, I think, uh, is in the movie. I think I think it is Matt Donner, and. Um, uh, Alan Tudyk from yep. Firefly uh, was pretty good. Who's he? Invisible Man? No, he's um. Fuck, what was his name? He was the bad guy. I don't know. It was pretty good. Anyways, mm. I'm only in the first episode, so uh, I still got to catch up with Titans. See how that is. I only watched the first episode, and I think the only thing that didn't get me to the second episode is it was like I'm a I'm okay with violence. Yeah, but it was just like. It's still me trying to process a Robin do that insane amount of violence. Like I told you guys what he does where he smashes someone's head through a car window, puts it on the broken glass and slides it across the door. It's just like, I don't imagine a, I don't even imagine Damien being that hard. I think the thing is that because it's Dick, right? It's Dick Grayson. Yeah. So that's one thing. Yeah, it's Dick it Grayson. Does, too. It weird. doesn't seem like Dick Grayson. I can Hold see up. You sure it's not Rick? It's not Rick. I could see, I could see that being uh, an older Damien who's seen mm-hmm. some shit. Okay, or I could even see it being Jason Todd after he came. You know, make it where he's come back from the dead, and now he's like, I'm still going to be a Robin. Well, when he dies, he comes back as Red Hood. I get that. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but it's just one of those things that it doesn't seem like a Dick so, Grayson thing, right? It's not. No, that's the. Weird How many thing episodes for have me. you watched? Just, just one. one. I just said that. How long have you had this service? You only watched one. What are you? Yeah, doing? I've been watching all the animated stuff. The By the way, can. I thought they would have more of the movies. They don't have more of all the movies on there. I didn't see Batman 66, the movie. Batman, I don't know. They have a lot of newer ones, though. They have the remake of the Death and Return of Superman. Um, they have the... Well, yeah, the animated, animated ones. Animated. They have all the animated stuff on there. Yeah. Batman, all the Batman, all the Superman, all the Justice League. Oh, you're League. meaning like the original Batman 1966 yeah, series. Yeah, the movie. Oh, I don't know. Back when he was watching movies. You know, some days you can't get rid of a bomb. That guy. Oh, they won't, yeah. Shark I don't repellent. know. Is that when he? Was that when he uses the bat repellent? Or yeah, the, the, the shark, shark repellent. repellent. Yeah, what I just said. 
They got most so of the classic stuff. I said Shark Girl, and then you go, is that the one where they use it? Oh, I see. I missed that. I think that's that, you. <laughs> I think when whenever um, they do the revamp with the Warner Brothers is like, you need some of the newer stuff on there. Get the Dark Knight trilogy on there. Get Man of Steel. Get all that stuff on there. Um, that's because, you know, obviously Disney Plus is going to come blow everyone out of the water. You got to reconfigure your strategy. And it did like the comic book reader, but they need to work on how they present it. Because I found it very hard to because it's not like there's no way to like just look at series there's either like to look at the recommendations or search for one yeah mm-hmm. it's very and odd it's like what the fuck like it'd be let nice me, if there let was... me just go by detective comics i have to search for detective comics then click detective comics and by the way when you search for detective comics there's like four different ones right they and, do by volume and whatever and well i thought that and then i found the one that started the earliest because i wanted to see what they had on there and i click it and the issues are all out of order and you can't sort by oldest and newest oh that's stupid yeah. what the fuck put it in order yeah, yeah how are you supposed to read some, that in order there's some weird things with that and i think like even when you do read it on like your tablet or whatever you can tell that it was built for a bigger aspect ratio because they want you to be able to read comics on your tv so i read one on my tablet and it looks a little wonky, but you do it on your like big screen TV, and it's like fucking clear as day. It looks great. What are you? How are you watching uh, your TV? Um, Xbox One. You can now download the app. So oh, it works, works now. Yeah, I know. I have a Samsung smart TV, and I'm like, uh, can't download. That's the only hindrance of me probably watching it more is I can't watch it on my TV because without hooking up my laptop, and I don't want to do that. All right, we'll check it out. Doom Patrol, pretty soon Swamp Thing on the thirty first, and then after that Harley Quinn, right? Yep. Young Justice has been going on. And then three. after that, what do we got? Star Girl. That got pushed back. Well, all right. Good thing I got in this time. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, this is Wednesday Comics Podcast. We were going to talk about for the free talk here. Jonathan Hickman coming back to Marvel Comics. Um, and he's dipping his toes into what is known as the X-Men. Um, he was bored not creating anything anywhere else. Well, actually, uh, today the image solicits came out for what's three months from now. Um, oh, you know, July, July, and uh, Black Monday Merge is not on their sale. So no, it's on. I saw it coming out in May. False. No. Yeah, because I that got canceled. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Is that coming out? Well, I don't. I don't order it, so I don't know. Like, I don't get the combat. It's you know what we need to Good. make? We, shit. For the recording studio, we just need to make a big list of series that should have more, like Batman Creature of the Night number four. Never or three and four. No, three's out. Three's out. Three's four, out. I mean, four hasn't come out. Four not out. Batman Dam number three got delayed. Well, I know, but when's it coming out? Uh, next month is what I've seen. Well, it's just like same thing with Black Monday Murders. When that? Yeah. When's that gonna come out? Now, Doomsday Clock got pushed back nine months. Jonathan, holy Hickman. shit! They got not, me- <laughs> right? Yeah, not, nine, nine months or weeks? Back? Nine, nine weeks, nine oh. weeks. Sorry. Number issue number ten. The holy shit! It's the same going to end until twenty twenty. Well, it's not going to end until twenty twenty. Yeah, like there's no way. Issue ten. What issue are we up to? Uh, eight. Yeah, no, so, yeah. Eight or nine. So issue no, nine, ten was nine. is two issues for now, and that's delayed nine weeks. The one that was supposed to come out next was like delayed a month or something like that. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about a book that was originally going to come out in four months, now delayed nine more weeks, which is two more months, which would push it to the span over three years. Uh, June. Yeah. No, no. Two. It would have been. A book that came out four months from now originally, and now it's coming out eight months from now. Hmm. So that is next year. Jesus. Well, anyway, Jonathan Hickman's returning to Marvel Comics to revamp the X Men franchise, and not a moment too soon. Before we explain our optimism, this article is from the Pace dot com, Pace Magazine. Uh, Jonathan Hickman will be writing a twice, two twice monthly series, uh, effectively weaving into a weekly dose of Hickman. Uh, here we go. We have House of X. Drawn by Pepe Lorez, uh, who did Extermination, while Amazing Spider-Man and Hunt for Wolverine contributor R.B. Sova will uh, illustrate Powers of X, which is pronounced Powers of Ten. Oh, excuse me, evoking the Roman numeral. Uh, colorist Marte Gre- uh, Garcia, uh, no Gracia, um, who has been contributing to the X-Men on and off since 2010, will color both of the series. Uh, so here's what they're going to be about, guys: House of X and Powers of Ten. Uh, House of X. Of course, there's no way of knowing exactly how Brooks' image is meant to be. Oh, there's an image from uh, Max Brooks up here. Where is... Oh, I guess there's nothing in here that... For the record, none of those titles sound good. What do you mean? House of X or Power of Ten? Power of Ten I'm actually okay with. That sounds interesting. House of X sounds good. I don't know. Why They made this article and it's just talking about all the X-Men stuff. I want to know what these books are fucking about. 
Well, it's in here. While somewhere. you're looking for that, what we can already tell is I think you said potentially these might not be in canon, which if it's not, I think we're all going to consider it canon because the, what's mm-hmm. going on with X-Men right now is all shit. Like it's there's 16 X-Men titles trying to cash in on a good thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, when when Uncanny X-Men was coming out, I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm on that. And then I saw the first issue was seven ninety nine. I was like, go fuck yourself. And it was weekly. <laughs> so, No. Um, whatever's think, happening with X Men right now, whoever the editor of that is, it's like, dude, how about you throw out every single book, have these two come out and start anew because it is just a mess. Well, I think it's it's much like when uh, what was it? Avengers and then what was the one oh, shit New Avengers? I I didn't get those books right away, and in hindsight, I should have gotten them right when they came out because I mm-hmm. spent a little more than I probably should have for them. Anyway, uh, worth that. Oh, then they're worth having. I haven't read them all, but they're worth having. All right, I got it here, guys. Hickman and artist Pepe Larea's House of X appears to be a more traditional of the two books. Lawrence's first cover features a modern Cyclops, uh, Silver Age Jean Grey, a Charles Xavier's new look, and Magneto and Brian Michael Bennis era costume in Wolverine's traditional orange and brown outfit. Here's the, decri- the description as follows from Marvel. Since the release of Uncanny X-Men number one, there have been four sensible moments in the history of the X-Men. Giant size X-Men, X-Men Age of Apocalypse, and... New X-Men, sorry, X-Men was X-Men, and then Age of Apocalypse, that's two different ones. Four iconic series that introduced a new era for Marvel's mutants and revolutionized the X-Men. In House of X, Charles Xavier reveals his master plan for mutant kind, one that will bring mutants out of the shadows of mankind and into the light once more. So uh, House of X will be Charles Xavier's book, but those guys will be the main uh, people, Wolverine, Magneto, Charles, but he's in uh, Fatal Max's body now. I don't know if you read, you read the Astonishing. Wait, wait, what's going on? He's in Fatal Max's body. Charles. Exactly. Charles? Who's Phantom X? Uh, uh, he's a mutant. Yeah. Who has you'd person- see him. Multiple he, personalities. Well, you'd oh. see him. He's he's in a white outfit normal, most of the time. He's in X-Force mm-hmm. a lot of the time. Uh, Jean Grey and then Cyclops. It's good but team. like a Silver Age Jean Grey. Okay. Uh, Power X, or excuse me, Power 10, number one, uh, is a little harder to pin down for this title. Hickman and artist R.B. Silva are apparently introducing alternate universe X-Men, or at least mashups that we've seen before. Here's the description as follows. <sighs> Hickman continues his revolutionary new direction for the X-Men. Intertwining House of X and Power of X reveals the secret past, present, and future of mankind. Changing the way you look at the X-Men story before and after. You will not want to miss this uh, seminal moment in the history of X-Men. So it looks like the the Power of Ten one is going to be like alternate universes. uh, X-Men story, like a different universe. And it makes sense because on the cover here we have magic, but she looks like uh, Colossus. We have a juggernaut, but it's a robot juggernaut. We have Xavier, like the real Xavier, but he's like way young. We have a uh, night crawler, but he's all red like his dad. Dan. Um, who else do we have in this cover? I don't know. So anyways, that's what that book's going to be about. Hmm. And they're going to intertwine, so what imagine. It's kind of like Avengers, Little, New Avengers. A Charles Xavier, bad one, and a good one. Because yeah. so. he's not easy bad or is he good? You know, you read this astonishing. I haven't read. We've the last read two, Invaders, <clears throat> Homo Superior. Yeah, kind of, but that's he's kind of a douche. That's, that's, that's he's kind of a douche. We're talking yeah. about ever since he came back. Alternate universe. Um, I, I, I will admit I'm actually fairly excited for this. I love. I'm, 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 I use love too frequently and too easily. I really do enjoy the X Men. I loved those movies when they first were coming out. You know, back in 2000, 2002. Um, love the cartoon. And when there was, wasn't it Bendis who was doing Uncanny and All New? X-Men? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Those were great. Those right. were good. Oh, my gosh. I loved those so much. And then after they got done with Battle of the Atom, it kind of changed positions, went to other things, and it got out of what I was enjoying. Um, I'm excited it to get back. It hasn't been good the- ever since, though. Well, and that's the thing is that, like you said, every season, every year, they're putting out another two or three different books because uh, Generation X didn't last. Uh, red, blue, gold, purple, Shaniqua. They all didn't last. <laughs> That's a color, right? Um, it's just one of those things that I, I would like to see a good X-Men. I think Hickman is one of those people who can do it. Yeah, for sure. I enjoyed uh, Karen Gillan's X-Men. I enjoyed Jason Aaron's um, Wolverine, the X-Men book. It was pretty good. I mean, that was still in that time, though, too. That was pre-Bennis. That's pre. It was pre-Bennis. Before, it was before, all before the, Bennis, the yeah. Um, and then uh, also the... Um, Never heard of it. What was that Jeff Lemire book? Extraordinary X-Men. That was good, too. I know, but it's been sprinkled in over how many different series in the last, like, three years? (laughs) Like, 20. I mean, 
I know we complain about it, but that's the X-Men, baby. No, I get that. But, I mean, the part of it for me was that I always felt like the X-Men were an influential group of heroes that they didn't have to be heroes. They could have been these monsters that the humans all thought they were. And what a way to show, you know, segregation that, oh, you're a mutant. I don't want to be in where you've been. I don't want to catch what you got. Um, I, t- I guess that's me. what I want to see more of X-Men stuff is I want to see those things that have already been done. But I want to see him in the new age. And I'm not saying that Hickman's going to do it. He's going to do his own thing. But I think, one, being he's going to be making money from this book, he's going to be sticking on it. And two, what a good choice for a writer, though, who has made an Avengers a household name when it comes to getting a book. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm willing to get an Avengers book until I've been burnt by it. Well, I think that he's obviously going to be writing these books for at least the next two to three years. I would say. I mean, if you think of if if it's going to be as long as this Avengers New Avengers run, so well, even if he did a year, there'd be twenty four issues of each book. All right, let's get into these comic books. Gideon Falls number uh, twelve. Yep. Uh, Jeff Lemire, Andrea Sorrentino, Dave Stewart on colors. Uh, The last issue, we were in this kind of a what do you call it in between dimensions? Voidish thing. I don't know. We'll call it the void. Weren't they in the black barn? Yeah, I guess that's what it's called. I mean, well, because they did the exchange, didn't they? Yeah, but they went into the black barn together. We saw a lot of from we, different. We ends. saw a lot about uh, Norton Sinclair, who uh, who is Norton Sinclair now. I mean, we have Norton Sinclair not only as the modern the day person. one, we have a crazy one. We potentially have one that who was, smiles in the dark. Well, I'm saying there isn't there another one too that's like a sibling. Uh, well, I think I think he, I think he is actually her brother. But he thinks he's Norton Sinclair because he went to the void and he got fucked up. Right. But that actually is her brother. Um, so they go there. Uh, this issue specifically is about the priest going back to 1886. And uh, it's like Cowboys uh, uh, kind of uh, Wild West time. But that's Father Burke. Isn't that the father before this one? Or is that the one, the actual this, father? This is Wilfred. This is, is the, the guy. one. This is the guy who died, right? The ghosty one? It, yeah. Burke. Yeah. Okay. So Burke's yeah. the one before Wilfred. Okay. Um, Wait, no, that doesn't make sense. It can't be, because how would Father... No, Father Fred was... No, that is Wilfred, but Wilfred, this is 2019. If it was before this, it's not 1898. But but he's traveling back in time and things. I mean, 1886. I mean, this is one of those issues that I don't know what... It's Father Burke. It is Father Burke? Okay. I don't know what's going on, other than Father Burke is getting thrown through time. That makes sense, because that map at the end. Uh, which was, like, honestly, like one of the best panels was just the, I'm making myself a map. I'm going to need it. Uh, so yeah, so uh, he has a map at the end where he has home, and then off from that, he has Gideon number two, which is the frontier land. And then he makes another one, Gideon three, which is steampunk land. Uh, so this guy's jumping around in different dimensions, and... Uh, we kind of see a little bit what this black barn can do in Norton. We get kind of get an idea. Like, um, I know you guys don't read this, but it has shows guess I'll want if he was here. This is a uh, straight up uh, dark, dark Tower shit. Is really? It, I, I mean, it feels like Back to the Future, but I actually in Dark Tower they jump between dimensions. Oh, really? And uh, the first dimension is Gunslinger. And so it feels really like that book. And the second dimension they go to is like modern, like eighties New York. Uh, but I know they go to steampunk here, but it does feel a lot. It reminded me, this issue reminded me a lot of that. And actually, it was surprised uh, that they would go that route. But it also is like a horror version. Like I said, it's a horror version of Stephen King. Um, but it, I mean, this seems more that way. And uh, Norton, the Smiling Man, I guess is the name we're going to call him now, because he refers to himself like twice as a Smiling Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's Norton. Um, That's boring. I really love this issue. And it's it really was way different than the rest of the issues. Like if I were. If I had, uh, if there was like a big delay between these last two issues, I would have been like, what the, I don't remember this, this isn't the story because it's such a like jump back in time and then you jump to the steampunk thing and then he puts out the map. It like, it went from horror, uh, like kind of, I don't want to say fantasy in the traditional sense, but it was kind of more fantasy than anything. And then now it's more science fiction. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I can feel a heavy influence of science fiction, obviously with traveling different dimensions It. It does open because, like, we were thinking, like, this book it can't last forever, right? At this current rate, but again, it kind of opened up with this new yeah, story element that there's more things that could happen now. Some dimension jumping, just like Black Science. Yeah, but the, like, is it time jumping, like uh, Paper Girls? There you go. Well, it's both. It's both. Because, well, actually, if he was doing time or time jumping 
and he wasn't not he's not even in a time machine. He doesn't have the. Um, I feel like it's dimensions though, because this steam yeah. that steampunk world an actual time, and when we had fucking uh, uh, what are those things called? Blick, uh, what are those things called? I don't know what they it are. It seemed like steampunk Zeppelins? in the future because that guy had a legit steampunk arm. Yeah, and it was like zeppelins, like it was the future, but it was steampunk. Yeah. So I think I think it's dimensions. It's what could have been the zeppelin or what is other places. The Hindenburg. Boom. Well, I, this is the first issue we got exposed to. Uh, so Andreas, Andreas, Andrea Sarantino. I read the last issue in this one. I didn't realize that it was back behind an issue. Uh, that's what this is. When did like. 11 come out? Because it felt like a little bit ago. Uh, I got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it right here. I'll let you know. January? Um, yeah. January, so February. Been two months at least. Two, three months. Let's see here. I, this, I think the fun thing about this book, and that a lot of the time it's a Jeff Lemire story, t- you know, way of doing it is that this is all one big arc. Because you couldn't just jump in at this start of the new arc. Because I'd, I'd have no idea what the hell I'm reading. Oh, no. You'd be confused as fuck. I mean, I'm confused and I've already read the book. or read up to this point. I can't imagine someone who goes, I'm going to pick up Gideon Falls, number 12. Hop right into this book. I'll understand February 13th. It. February. Okay. Well, yeah, two months. If you think about it, it's kind of it could be like Cowl, you know, where the first issue was never going to be the first issue. It was kind of like a prequel, yeah. and that could be the entire first two arcs. I will say, leading into as somebody who reads digital now, and mostly on my phone because it's more convenient, I do like to read on the iPad, but it's very hard to get the iPad uh, when Jack wants to watch some uh, YouTube. Um, <laughs> so, but I do. Whatever, so tonight I read on my phone. Uh, this book does really needs like a full canvas. Like when I read on the iPad, perfect. Mm-hmm. And when I read my phone, I kind of go pan of you. But then I, after a while, I was like, oh, let me go full page. And that's when you appreciate it, when you see this whole oh, full yeah. page. He does not make it for the panel. Which, which I mean, Comixology, for the first couple of issues, would do panel by panel. Then the last thing would show you the whole page. And then we would go to the next one. Right. And they didn't do them the last two issues, which surprised me. Hmm. Huh. And hearing from what Dylan used to tell us from his Champions book, uh, they all do that themselves. Like, Jeff and them wouldn't have any... Say in it, they just they have somebody at Comicsology that does that for them. Oh wow! So where it was, get back doing to doing that. I needed that full page. Well, maybe like you know, Sorrentino's art is so beautiful and so intricate. Maybe they were just like, "Fuck, never gonna get done with this." Like, <laughs> I gotta just keep moving on. <laughs> uh, but man, some of those panels, you just like, want to be like, "Fuck, dude, how long does this take?" Well, there's the Give one this time. It, it's yeah. fucking gold. Oh, it time. is great. The the frontier one where the doctor's walking up and he's one he's. Looking for the sheriff and the deputies as they're going to hunt uh, Norton down. And he walks upon a crucified sheriff and deputies. Yep. That was a wicked page to turn to. Like, that's how a, a page turner should be. Where I get there, I don't know what I'm going to see because I'm, I'm one of those people as I'm reading a book and I can see in the bottom corner, oh, someone got shot in the face. Okay. Well, I already, it's already kind of spoiled. Okay. Oh, okay. That was fine. This is one of those. You see the face of the sheriff, or not the sheriff, um, Pastor, Burke, uh, Burke, priest, the priest Burke, and his face is just like, holy shit, what am I looking at? And then you turn the page, like, holy shit, what am I looking at? So I think we're definitely in the next couple issues going to find out more, obviously, about Norton Sinclair and like why he's a bad guy, why he's the smiling man. Yeah, that's fucking, gosh, still creepy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, He's been creepy since issue one, mm-hmm. and so it'll be kind of cool to dive into who is this, yeah. the keeper of the Gar- black box. Gary Trey, look at his arm. He's got a full robot arm, so this must be like the future oh, of yeah. the steampunk. Right. Game. Uh, I'd give this issue a 10. I really loved it. Uh, like, I thought that, you know, I was like in my brain, I was like, God, I feel like it's been forever since the last issue came out, and I read this one. I really wasn't confused. I could see where it fits place in the story. Um yeah, so sorry for you new readers. You had to go to issue one. You can't just jump in, right? Which here. is totally worth the read, though. Yeah, like, this is sure. a great book. I would actually, I would give this a ten. This is probably one of my favorite issues to have jumped, not jumped into, because again, not not for the faint of heart. Don't just jump into this as a new reader. Um, but as an issue, it was so much fun to time travel. And if you've ever heard from the past, uh, time travel is stupid, and so is space. But this book makes it worth its time. What a way to go from the frontier, uh, show these gruesome things, get to learn a little bit more about our smiling friend who's terrifying, and then to go to this a steampunk land. Uh, let's face it, we all want some robot arms. Uh, a couple things here. Uh, it is done for me, too. Um, this, I mean, last week I was kind of uh, uh, complaining, I'll say, about no book really uh, making me uh, excited anymore. This book was 
made, like made, made me uh, want to read more comics. And mm-hmm. it's a glad because I read this first. So which was good. I actually made tonight a good night to read comics. Um, going back to the steampunk thing. So every single house has, uh, and it says here actually airships, mm-hmm. um, what they're calling them. And they're all like tethered to houses because that's like how you would park it at your house, which I find uh, cool. And then also uh, when he's making his map, it's over some magazines. And one of them says Gideon Falls, the city of the future. So it's supposed to be like the future. Sweet. So we'll see. The next issue is going to take place all in it, I assume, from that cover. Yeah. Um, For the record, all these covers always look amazing. This one, this cover for issue 12 was a noose. Yes. Uh, the next issue is a cover of what gears and clocks and steam work. So excited. Yeah. yeah. And we can't wait. Uh, for a sender, right? As fans of, course, of Descender, of course. I mean, yeah, uh, Marvin read Descender so hard. Yep, he loved so it. Cool. It was his favorite book. Even out did Killer Be Killed. Alex, what else was on the docket? Punisher tonight? number four, written by Chip. Re- redo that. Why? You just said Punisher number four. What I did? Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was like, it's mm-hmm. well for the cover for the record. The cover does have mostly the Punisher for the cover. Of the record for the cover. Of the record. <laughs> What's going on <laughs> with you? <laughs> Be, Daredevil number four. Strong. Daredevil number four. Written by Chip Zadarsky. Which I, I can't do it like Marvin does. Chip. Zadarsky. There you go. And the artist is Marco Cicchetto, right? I think that's yep. the correct way to say it. Yep. Um, yep. I, if you if you haven't heard our forecast, if you haven't heard me talk about the last, um, we'll say two and a half months, two months, I love this book. And... Chichetto may have been one of the best. He was actually on the Greg Rucker run. Okay. For the Punisher. That one is the Punisher. Uh, anyway, so this issue we find out uh, Punisher is the one who has saved Daredevil from getting the shit kicked out of him, being arrested by the cops. Uh, he's nursing him back to health. What a good man Frank Castle is. Uh, as we're Daredevil waking up, we hear heartbeat so fast. And of course, this one mean, steel hearted person. The thump. The heartbeat of a psychopath, D.D. says. Of course. Respect right there. Then he opens his eyes to a pretty shitty looking hideout. It's very dirty. Uh, Punisher has a couple different uh, body armor sitting up and uh, full of weapons. He says, welcome back, pal. He had full of weapons. Um, I wish that they'd be friends more often. Well, I mean, I realize they've got different points of view on how to do things. They're allies. But they're I not. They would well, I know. Are they allies? Sometimes they are. I guess. Yeah. None in this. None in this issue. Yeah, well, they talk about their history, but some, they also talk about how they've been at ends with each other before. I assume they're like Dylan. You son of a bitch! Punch him in the face. Not even the world. And, um, they just punch each other in the Mark face. Mark Wage Run. They also fight in that issue too. There's issue no number seven. They fight all the time. Is that well, the one with the guns on the cover? No, I think it's someone to punch her in the cover. Well, I think you know Punisher <laughs> saves Daredevil. But I also think that this is by torturing this guy about Alzi and whatever. It's also in a way punishing Matt for murdering the guy from the first issue to the point where either Matt believes he killed that guy or he believes he kills the guy that Punisher actually shoots in the head because of Daredevil's actions. So anyway, Enjoy Daredevil so. Said, asks Punisher, just let the guy go. He's, he's telling you the truth, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Punisher's like, sure. Okay. Cuts him loose. The guy that's being tortured goes and finds a gun and Punisher shoots him in the face. Right. So did you guys get that? Did you think that Daredevil was feeling remorse for that kill? No, no. That's okay. He he thinks it's the first guy. You think it's the first guy? But Yeah, boy. But yeah, why is he all of a sudden now he's like, oh, I did do it. Like, Well, he's lost a lot of blood. He got the shit kicked out of him last issue. The cops all think he's done it. And even the ones, even the cops who are on his side letting him do his thing kind of questioning him and they're letting you know cole this big burly dude beat the shit out of him also doubts creeping in his mind so i could see that where you're like everyone thinks i did it mm-hmm. i can't remember Must if i true. did it or not yeah you're right okay must be true um i make i want to make a clarification before somebody tells me i was wrong uh daredevil number 11 not seven uh for mark wade uh the artist guess who it is marco chichetto um is it really yeah Oh, it's this is the tie-in one, isn't it? It's a tie-in. In between Avenging Far Spider-Man, enough. Daredevil, and... Yeah. Okay. How do you know that? I may not remember the issue, but now I can see like the covers. Uh, and they don't fight. They do actually have an alliance. So nice. that's what the description says. Um, something I loved about this issue specifically 
is two things. First off, we see Daredevil get up and take his guns, and he Frank realizes that he would be better puncher than he would be, uh, which I don't know. I don't know necessarily is true, but I guess but he does have martial arts skills, and Frank is just a military guy. But the sounds of the bullets shooting. Oh, that's true. What I mean, that's mean? a lot of sound in play. That's true. That's the other thing that kind of bugged me is that it was indoor closed explosives that I thought that was kind of yeah. Why I'm pretty sure it? Daredevil's death. Well, I mean, it's gonna take, I mean, it's going to take him a long time to ding. Alex, we're like a foot away, and that's how far he shot the bombs. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how, he he either had a bladder spasm or he his internal <laughs> organs have been shit out. Like he <laughs> was dying. I said, they're, I mean, they're all dead in this building. Because they both get up, eh, I'm fine. Just, I'm going to carry an unconscious Punisher over to the. This, this is the only thing that bugged me is that, and I was telling the guys before this, is that in the Punisher book, uh, Punisher Frank is over in, I think it's pronounced Bulgaria, wherever Baron Zemo is at, holding them in prison. It's kind of feeling like a Captain America thing. Bulgaria. Anyway, Dude, Chip Zarsky no knows no one's reading that. So we're. You know, but it's actually pretty good. Anyway. Who's writing that book right now? Matthew Rosenberg? Yep. I still have After that first issue, it actually did progress to getting back to what normally... Anyway, not trying to talk about it. It just bugged <laughs> me that in this issue, though, Daredevil just picks up Punisher, drops him off at the cops, steals his shirt. What a, what a dick. Like, I don't like when Punisher or all these heroes all get arrested. I can't wait until we see the next issue where Punisher's killing the shit out of everybody to get back out of prison. Why are you mad he took his shirt? Dude, that was a bitch in shirt. <laughs> I think that's the part of it. Like, even when they do like a blacked out thing, so there's the part where Punisher is standing there holding the gun to the bad guy, and Matt's in the bed trying to figure out how to get back out, and they're talking. It's all blacked out, all shadowed out, but that freaking skull is all white out. I'm like, yes, show me that skull. Look cool. uh, I do like Chochetto on this book, uh, especially for the tone that they're going for. He did that issue, obviously, Mark Wade, I just mentioned, but also I believe he did Warzone for yes. Greg Rucka. So, and this really does feel like a book that is kind of um, in the same realm of tone. And so, I actually have been enjoying this Daredevil series. Chip Sadarsky, once again, I said, I told you before, this guy's maturing as a writer. He's a guy who used to write literally dick jokes uh, for Matt Fraction and draw dicks, obviously, too. Um, now is writing, uh, what, two of my favorite books? Invaders. Invaders, this. Daredevil. Um, oh, he's writing the Spider-Man book that you've been, life story. you've been gloating about. Uh, life Story, yeah. I say, so far, this could be the year of Chip Zdarsky, at least if he's not up there at the tier he's of uh, definitely, Jeff Lemire. Him and Jeff are definitely getting get in the ring. But, I mean, he's, sh- he's showing how good, how not how good, that's bad English, how well of a writer he has become. Yeah. Chip, how good. And how de- how good he be. How isn't good. That, he's so developed. Isn't that kind of crazy? Like, I'll even throw Donnie Cates in there a little bit, how these comedic writers can, I mean, I'm saying that they're shoehorned into doing just comedy. You know, I'm kind of soured on Donnie Cates now. Really? After that, uh, Marvel Knights. Marvel Knights. <laughs> Did that ever finish? Yes, it's six issues. I didn't even read it. I was like, you know what? I've read the first three. <laughs> Meh. Donny Cates is one of those. He's he's done a lot of good work, and there's a you book. Like Gar- well, we'll talk about that. I, I guess. say yeah. there's there's some books he still does a good job on, but I will admit I agree with Marvin. There's no, too no. many things that Donnie's on now that none of them seem to get full focus. It wasn't it wasn't me saying that I think he's a bad writer. I'm just saying before he was one of those guys who didn't know wrong and be like, yeah, Donnie Cates again, I'm going to get it. But now I'm more hesitant because of that Marvel Knights book. Uh, so I kind of yeah. just soured myself on him. But I just mean like Chip, he did Chip. this spectacular Spider-Man. Like, oh, yeah. And he's a great he's doing, storyteller. No, that's uh, excuse me, Tom Taylor. Never mind. Yep. From the neighborhood. Um, uh, yeah. This was a good night for me. Nice night. I like, I like Daredevil. I like Punisher. I like the art. Uh, I like the tone that this issue and I like the the way this issue is self-contained and having a Punisher Daredevil story, uh, but yet still forwarding this for the, the plot. So I did like it. I want to give it a 10, but I can't because Punisher got arrested and it bugs me. <laughs> um, I give it a 10. I mean, I, I read these four issues back to back because I was far behind. I'm really far behind on my comics right now. Um, but I loved it. And I think issue four was just great because I had read the first three issues before that, but it was also refreshing to see, you know, the Punisher, um, kind of in the eyes of Daredevil, as opposed to like in Punisher's books, he's like, he's always justified, but in Daredevil, he's like, Oh fuck. It's a psychopath. Like everyone run. Like he fully understands who the Punisher is. And so like, Instantly, when that guy's in that room, Daredevil's like, hey, man, 
I really don't want you to kill him, but I just know you're going to. Well, that's what I was going to say. I find it funny how Punisher in any other book is like the psychopath, and he really is in this issue when he's like trying to play mind games with Daredevil and be like, no, dude, you you would be better than me. And it's like, what the fuck? Get away. First off, I'm not like you. And second of off, uh, why do you want me to replace you for some reason? Uh, we're in his own book. Yeah, he has slices of, of gray. And so it's more about the human Frank Castle, where this is more of the psychopath. Frank right. Castle. Which was fun to see. But the one thing that I'm and not saying I agree with Frank Castle, he's a fictional character. But when uh, when he's telling Daredevil, like, you guys want to look like good guys. You're not you're afraid to be the monster. So you end up saving these people, these bad guys, just for them to come back again. And it's like, I kind of understand the Punisher going, I put down the monsters and I'm not afraid to be the bad guy. Knowing that I've saved these people's lives. And As that a fan not- of the Batman, how could you even agree with that? Uh, a vigilante <laughs> in different realms. Yeah. I like, it, I, Bruce is just as mean. He just won't kill you. Have you ever seen Breaking Bad? No. Oh, I've seen parts dude. of it. That half measure uh, uh, talk, that's what he's talking about. Right? <clears throat> yeah. you. That's going to be always the never-ending debate on a superhero is if they should kill it or not. Alex, let me ask you a question. Fully serious here. You are a superhero. I'm going to give you the powers of a Superman. You're going to kill? No. Then why the fuck are you even agree with Punisher yeah. then? See, I, I, but then that's like the weird gray area. Okay, if I'm Spider-Man, no, I'm not going to kill anybody. I get that. I can apprehend you without having what to kill. What if the Joker kicks your dog as hard you, as you can? can apprehend Am I still them, Spider-Man? It, no, you're Superman. But Alex. Oh, you kill the Joker. You're not saying it's hard to apprehend them. You're saying that <clears throat> they'll get out anyways and do worse shit. So Would even you if still you let me be on the show if I had super sweet powers and I killed people? Of course. Oh. Those are kill me. Done. <laughs> I don't know. I just uh, like, that's a weird area. I think it depends. Well, I'm more. You two. think it's just okay just because he uses bullets and not eye lasers? What do you say? <laughs> you th- just because he's a human, then you feel it's more justified than if he actually. He gave that guy a chance. He was going to shoot him. He <laughs> shot him first. <laughs> yeah, you could shot him in but, the but, hand, but that's the shoulder. T- no, one. You're See, never. Tra- you're it's never like trained. College humor. You're never he's trained. Asleep. You're never he's trained asleep. to shoot him in the leg or on the arm. You shot two in the chest, one. But in the if head. you wanted to. You could. If I wanted to, sure. But I <laughs> That's didn't. what I mean. But that's what I mean, though. Like, <laughs> but he didn't. You break him in half. That's the difference, though, <laughs> if you're going to be a hero or if you're just going to be a guy who stops bad guys. <clears throat> Vigilante. Well, clearly, Vigilante. you are not a hero. I'm sir. not a hero, fam. <laughs> I would be a monster. All right. Alex the Punisher there. Uh, Garrett, what, we, what else we get? We have the finale of West Coast Avengers issue 10, written by Kelly Thompson. With art by, since it's been a rotating artist, let me pull that bad boy up. Here it is. Sorry, the page is loading. It is Moy R. Whoever Moy R is. Um, So we got the finale of West Coast Avengers. Um, Last two issues, last two issues and a page have been kind of a letdown when... You know when a story turns kind of south is when you do, you like dovetail into humans turning into animals for no reason or there's vampires or werewolves <laughs> or there's a shark dog that yeah. loves everybody. I like the shark dog. I do like the, I like Jeff. Jeff is fine. But as soon as we found out like Kelly Thompson was writing Hawkeye before this and there's all this drama with uh Kate and her mom and there's this huge mystery just to come to find out the whole reason she was avoiding her daughter this whole time is because she's a vampire. Half and I, was in, vampire. I was embarrassed. Oh, my gosh. Get <laughs> yeah, over it. Right. That was the worst reveal ever. So in, in Hawkeye, issue 16, we knew this book was that. And I realize I'm calling back to a book that's been done for over a year and a half now or a year. Uh, that was a good end. We mm-hmm. knew it was ending. Didn't seem rushed. It wrapped it up in a nice little bow with the, hey, we can go on to something else. This book left such a, a bad taste in my mouth that, because even at the end of this issue, they talk about, it's almost like we're getting cancer <laughs> done. It's like, oh, no, yeah. I, di- I didn't need the, the fourth wall break. I just needed a book to go, hey, we have an HQ. We beat the bad guys. Woot, woot, West well, Coast Avengers. Except the issue before issue eight or nine, I read eight, nine, ten back to back. And even for issue eight to have a construction zone where there's no oh, yeah. building whatsoever on top of the dirt. Yeah. There's no way two issues later. It's built and, and done. Right after the same fight. Whoa, our, our West Coast Avengers HQ is built. It's like, eh, no. Um, K- 
character wise though, I actually loved it um, for the characters. Like characters were themselves the whole way through, except for the mom who's a vampire. Um, but like Kate, um, Ramon didn't fuse. Ramon didn't feel like herself though. Ramona or Ramon? Oh, the one since, that... since she's got changed over alloy, she didn't seem yeah. like herself. And I realize she's not the same character she's has been. But there's there's conversation in this battle between other people. I understand Clint and Katie. They're used to talking to each other, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Everyone else is like, whoa, bro, watch out behind me. Oh, this, 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 and this. It's like, no, that's it. There's there's character moments that were fine, and there's a lot of it where it's like, it wouldn't make sense. If Garrett and I were in a fist fight, not with each other, but fighting bad guys, I'm not going to be yelling Garrett and making jokes and stuff while we're fighting. One, that's not my personality. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it just... Well... And also with the Ramon storyline, I don't know if Kelly Thompson thought that was going to come back in a huge way, but I kind of liked that she was just human. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't really need her to be this Wakandan Super. spear armor person. I was like, why can't you just be America Chavez's girlfriend who she even says it like two issues ago. She's like, I am an African-American uh, award-winning surfer girl. And like, why can't she just be like, and I'm going to go try to protect my girl. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. Instead of like, we got like six pages of this backstory of their mother being uh, part of the Wakandan guard. Yep. And that she turns into vibranium spear. There was a, remember, did you read this? No, I haven't read West Coast in a second. So In a second? Oh, okay. <laughs> How long ago did you get off? Issue three. Like four. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, if I well, know, I, well, I mentioned the last time we reviewed on this show, it was probably about four, probably about three, four around there, maybe four or five, uh, definitely about three, four, and um, <laughs> three and a half. And I mentioned uh, it seemed like a little too jokey for me. I couldn't really like it for some reason. I couldn't get into it, so I just stopped. Oh. It's kind of like that Tony Stark meta stuff that they do a lot. Yeah, and it was okay with Kate in uh, Hawkeye because she had uh, serious moments around it, but with that many characters, especially with Hawkeye and Hawkeye in that book, right? It's just it was just too too jokey for me. Well, there's I mean the the team dynamic was weird, and especially with America Chavez. And, I like Chavez, but but she she, which, and that. she's great in the book for the most part. But in this one, she gets taken down. She she resembles a vampire goddess goddess that if they bite her, they'll be cured. I just threw up in my mouth saying it. Just uh, there's things in this book that mm. yeah, it's like. Don't throw vampires in as a way to finish your story. Let's Wait, just say that. Yeah. I don't so know. I, I, I'd five. give this a six. Um, I'm really upset that like five and a half average. I wish Kelly Thompson like had a book about this character that could keep going. Like I think she writes Kate Bishop and Clint Barton so well. I think it's just when there's so much going on, which is why I didn't like Mr. and Mrs. X or what, not that one. Uh, oh, Rogan Gambit. Rogan Gambit. There was so much going on in those issues. I'm like, I think you do better when you have the slow beat stories, which is, again, why All New Hawkeye was so enjoyable because it's about Kate solving mysteries, overarching mysteries coming into, but at the core of it, it was about one character doing something as opposed to a bunch of characters basically falling into saving people. Well, the whole thing is that this is like, there's never an issue where these guys weren't all together. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't seem like these had separate characters. There was just one big splurge of here's what's, excuse me, here's what's going on where the nice thing about Hawkeye was she's a private eye. She happens right. to team up with these people, but she's got an overall overarching mission of what she wants to do that. This is just, we kept getting drugged into the weird thing after weird thing after Dragged. weird thing. Yeah, what? drugs not a word. Drugged. Whatever, <laughs> I'll drug you. Word. <laughs> um, but yeah, hey, hey, you're a solicited man, huh? Uh, are they making a new Hawkeye book? You seen any solicits or anything like that? Well, these characters are going to live. Obviously, they got to make a Hawkeye book. Like that's something that's got to happen, especially that he's in the movies. Probably especially that, that he's going to have his own TV. Probably show. Probably close yeah. to that TV show. No. Problem. Uh, so yeah, I would imagine that these two will come back, especially Kate, since Kate's going to be in that show. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll get a book with just the two of them again. Hawkeyes. Yeah. Well, I would just rather see Hawkeye and Hawkeye or just I like Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes would be good. Sounds like you're saying hot guys. Oh, yeah. Hawk dude. <laughs> but I don't know. I usually like team books to have a purpose for each team member. And this was just like, let's take these eight characters and throw them He's at an things. X-Men. Uh, Gwen Poole, who doesn't know why she's here. Yeah. Um, the only thing, and there's one other thing that bugged me, is that when Fuse is talking... 
He goes, oh, that, that, whatever, her ex-boyfriend, he's kind of cute. Norvar. Okay, I was like, I didn't, I didn't need, I didn't need them to have this building of a they relationship a little bit between of an the agenda two. going in there, yeah. It's like, no, just let them, they were dating, let them date. Novar can be like, yeah, they're dating, cool. Rock on, bro. I didn't need the, he is kind of, he said I was cute too? It's like, oh, I didn't need that. Just let these characters, it's weird, go about their own thing, whatever. Anyways, that Five. is the end of Kelly Thompson's Hawkeyes. Maybe she'll be on the next one. Um, She's I would, doing Captain Marvel right now. Yeah, I, was say, I would doubt she'd be on it just for the fact that I don't really I haven't heard of too many writers being on two Hawkeye books and both of them being canceled and being able to write a third one. So we shall see. You know what you do? Bring Matt Fraction back. Um, is he doing DC book? Jimmy Olsen. Yeah, Jimmy Olsen. Boo! So he's going to DC. So fuck. him and Greg Rucka. Jimmy Olsen will fuck you up with his bow tie. Um, Ew. Black Match number nine. Tyler Jenkins on art. We got Matt Kent writing it and on that cover. He uh, said Black Magic. It's Black Badge. Burn, bitch. Black What's wrong with you guys? Badge number nine. Uh, I wish it was Black Magic. Well, okay, oh, because I said Greta Rucka. That's why. Um, no, I just fucked up. Uh, Black <laughs> Badge number nine. So this issue, uh, we have them being spied on uh, by... Somebody trying to figure out how much they know. Oh, that was the last issue. No, Wait, it, no, it was, starts no. out with a, a different faction. Of yeah, 1985. Oh, so we're going through the team before yeah. that. Oh, sorry. I read eight and nine back to back. That was eight. I did too. Um, I read that last night. It was good. Is so, Willie dead or is obviously that okay, other guy I, I wanted to know. because I we don't know. Well, I thought he was year. dead. Billy. Willie. Willie. W. Uh, good old Bill. It's in a shadow. You see. He's dead. You see the one guy you getting You think stabbed. that fat man beat up those two guys? Yeah. Dude, he was looking pretty ripped in that issue, to be honest. And he cut that one dude's throat open. Should with be fair, knife. when that bully tried to punch him, he got out of the way. So, uh, East oh. Berlin, 1985. We start off in with the old black badges. Hooka. Uh, Hooka. Where's that page where this is all their names? That's uh, the last page of that. Oh, okay. That little page of them. Like um, six pages then. They go to rescue somebody. Who are they rescuing here? Oh, scientist, a scientist. Who got shot at when they made a hot air balloon for him. Then he got burst into flame. Hey, William Fall Senior. Don't look at this flame in the sky. <laughs> William Fall Senior. Is that Willie's dad? Of course. Uh, Greta no. Hooka. Hooka Hens. In Gotcha Gotchlock. Uh, they go to see this guy in East Berlin. And bring him across the wall. And... Uh, I enjoyed that mm-hmm. beginning story. I first off, I didn't read what it said East Berlin 1985, so I was kind of fucked up for a second. <laughs> I didn't. I was like, "What? Who the fuck are these guys? Is this the future?" They're black. I was so confused, and then I went back and like, "Okay, East Berlin." Uh, coloring is fantastic in this mm-hmm. part. Um, I like how it kind of looks dreamish because it's in the past. Uh, I just love, like, especially this page here. I started this page for a while. This is some good colors. Um, and then uh, the second story we get is uh, them trying to leave because they realize... The uh, modern team. The modern team, sorry, uh, are trying to leave their uh, school uh, because they realize that uh, shit's fucked up and they're actually working for the the White Society. Is it the White Society? The Honor Honor Society. Honor Society, society White Badges. And then they're about to leave. A fucking robot drone thing. Do not move or you will be immobilized. This is a prohibited area. Says who? I don't like this. Come on, you dumb drone. Uh, they pick up a rock to throw it at him. It pulls out some rockets. <laughs> prohibited area, prohibited. Uh, and then it shoots them. And But it just turns out to be gas. They get knocked out. And they wake up. And the reconditioning is convincing. You want to answer a series of questions. Who is the honor society? What is their connection to the white badges? Who is the leader of the Scouts Without Borders? The Schwabbles. And which one did you pledge an allegiance? Isn't it Swabies? Swabies, sorry. Uh, and which one did you pledge allegiance to? So uh, they're in a uh, tight place. Go I was on. a little confused by this because in issue eight, they were on leave, right? And I mean, that's the first issue they get put on leave since they won the Jamboree. And when we get to this one, they're at Boy Scout school. Mm. Like what? Yeah, because when I'm on leave, I'm doing the thing. Well, they got put on leave. On le- huh? We saw Willie. Got his neck broken, and then uh, I don't. I think he's they went alive. back to school, dude. There's no way that Willie, who got every fucking badge, there well, obviously, is. I think some time has passed because they know Willie's already gone. So if it did happen like at the same time, then they would because they woke up and they were like, "Where's Willie?" So they were like brainwashed. They're being they're being brainwashed by eating the food and drinking the drink. 
So maybe they thought they wouldn't leave, but uh, they're getting brainwashed. So okay. got trapped. It felt like a very quick issue. It was cool. It's like we got like a one shot mixed in with the overarching story with that East Berlin. I did like the East Berlin. I don't know how it connects to this Makes besides f- them being the first one. You guys ever seen Alias? Yeah. Very Alias esque. Yeah. It was a very interesting story. I love this universe. Uh, this book was really good. I just, it felt really quick for me. So I'm going to give it a seven. The art was great. I mean, the art was incredible. Um, I just don't really know where the plot's going with the whole brainwashing thing. Um, and I'm not a big fan of uh, Walking Dead cliffhangers where I'm not going to find out for a while what happened to Willie. So. Oh, I, would ask, I was going to give this a nine because I enjoyed yeah, the I'll fact that I, I, I don't have the answer yet. I'm mad that I don't know that Willie's dead I'm or alive. Mad. I'm just like... It sounds like you're angry to me. I'm not angry. I just don't hate that being... Okay, like, you're terrified then. Read bait. You terrified about what happened to Willie? Because you don't believe he could get out of that. So he is dead. I believe he's alive. No, that dude can barely move his fingers. Dude, they literally show a shadow Fat. of they show a <laughs> shadow of the other guy with a dagger in his head. So one of those two is dead. Well, yeah, one of them really is dead, but the other one choked him out with a dagger in his head. You no, know, he, to be fair, if he, depending on how you stabbed, you wouldn't necessarily die from it. Your personality may be changed, but he may not be dead. I've been stabbed in the head before. That would we know that. that actually would explain a lot. No one, no one refilled the hole after that one. Uh, what? Huh? Uh, yeah, I give it a nine two. I really like that first story. The coloring is fantastic, um, and I am really excited to see where this book goes. Um, it, it really is a book. I don't think we really have any kind of spy books right now. Um, so it's scratch. I like spy shit. So uh, James Bond 007. I like spy shit. That? Yeah, but I, I haven't read it for a while, so I still get one of these times. I'm gonna put it on the list for you guys just to um, talk about. But what was it? Velvet. Velvet was fantastic. Yes. And it, uh, I'm glad to have like a spy spy book back. Jeans Bond, yes. Well, but we tried, I know we tried to give Black Widow more. a chance and that was bad. Well, <laughs> that's not a spy book. That was a piece of shit. <laughs> and I, never, I normally don't say that about books. I don't say the POS word. Uh, but that has no redeeming qualities, that Black Widow. I say piece of shit Probably a lot. one of the top 10 worst, worst books I've ever done. Damn. Before. Marvin's throwing it down thick here. Um, Alex, what else did we get? That was a. <laughs> Don't remind me of Black Sorry. Black Widow. Gardens of the Galaxy, number four, <laughs> written by Donny Cates, art by Jeff Shaw. Uh, this this book, I actually was surprised by this issue. I love this one. We didn't waste any time getting to uh, what Half Life, Half Water, Half Blood, something. Half where? Nowhere. Half so, half something. Anyway, uh, Rocket Raccoon's home planet. And half uh, world. Half world. Sorry, that's pretty close. I was getting there. Anyway, so we're on. A, I didn't realize that Groot was the captain of this ship. Of course, I suppose Peter's drunk. 10 times out of 11. So he's two shits. I like talking Groot. I like to, I like talking Groot. I'm he's just surprised he's the captain. Better character. Well, yeah, but yeah. But Peter Lord's so. being drunk and he doesn't want to go there. And he's got a mohawk. Groot. Right. And Gamora, spoilers, is in this issue. Uh, she's badass. Yeah. What? A, I mean, I don't know where she's been. I know we, none of us had read, uh, what was it? Infinity Wars. Infinity World. Wars. We never read that. Uh, I want to read speak it. speak for me. Descender. Have you read it? <clears throat> No, I read it. Okay, I'm saying don't speak for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, so too late. Uh, Gamora, <laughs> they land the ship, loves uh, punk rock, Groot, uh, Barry Bill chucks a hammer at her. God, this, and I then loved, she sends it back with a bunch of bombs on it. I loved it. Like, I was just so surprised that I didn't expect to actually see Gamora in this issue. I thought that Gamora was going to be the uh, release at the end, being like, oh, man, I got to wait a whole month to see what's, what's going the, on. What the fuck's up with Rocket? He just peers out like a little fucking... Well, again, Something must have happened in Infinity Wars that's like, fuck my family. Because mm. like... Try to check it. I'm going to check it out. Whatever. You can check it. But like all you see at the end when they're leaving, it's like, we'll, Groot and Gamora, like, we'll come back to this when we've taken care of this Thanos thing. You get to see a little tiny paw hand just like... Groot, don't leave me. My family. We homies, bro. I mean, you really should apologize, but Whatever you, you, you did can do me. that like six <laughs> issues from now. <laughs> Um, but I like when Groot goes, yeah, I can't do, or was they can't fix the spaceship. So anyway, they're leaving uh, Half World, get attacked by Gladiator and his Guardians of the Galaxy, and there's a whole big duel it out. They're like, the Dark something, the Dark Guard, or what? I can't remember what they're they, called. In, the, in this they issue, what they called that? Or yeah. The, okay. Yeah, I missed issue. that. Anyway, uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider, who's on the cover as this part of the team, he's not actually on this team, he's on Eros's team. Dude, that Glenny. cover is awesome. This cover is awesome, by David Marquez. Actually, mm-hmm. that makes me excited. I wish I wish he was back on a book that I liked. Right. 
Um, yeah, this issue was awesome. Uh, Gamora is kind of like, you didn't realize you missed her until she was in this book. Mm -hmm. You're like, damn, she's such a good part of Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, things that we've seen building up is like Cosmic Ghost Riders and Gladiators team. They're going to have a fight with the Guardians of the Galaxy. That's exciting. Um, I wish there was a little tease of more Thanos stuff to come, but that's going to come, obviously. But the one thing is that Gamora tells them, um, He's just ripping you off. It's not anything, which right. obviously it is something, but she's pretty sure it's not. Did you like how those little bug... Was that last issue three where the bug creatures were playing with Thanos' head? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't Oh, because that was with Hela, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, great art, Jeff Shaw, as we've seen before in the past. Uh, great story from Donny Cates. I do enjoy this book. Uh, this is not one of the Cates books that uh, I feel like... Uh, uh, I could trust this one. And I can say, like, I would say to pick this up four issues and we're doing pretty good. I, I read what happened to Rocket. Turns out he just saw uh, Star-Lord get uh, killed in front of him by Gamora. And so maybe he doesn't like Gamora. Uh-huh. It seems weird, though. It's like, dude, now they're like walking together and they're okay with it. But you're still buying a, I don't know. Well, That's to all be fair, I saw. To be I, fair he, he, spoilers, he did just get shot again. Well, I know, but why does Groot, like, we don't talk about Rocket. That's probably a hard thing. Hates him. I feel like if you and your brother broke up. You stop being Broke friends. Up. <laughs> yeah. Well, think a band. Like you guys stopped hanging out and something bad happened. Fallout. So you're saying that they had me fallout. and my brother had a fallout because <laughs> falling out. His girlfriend murdered him. <laughs> like, what? That you know what? I can believe you guys have that fallout. <laughs> yeah. And then I he, hate you. And then Corey came dead. back and he was okay with his girlfriend, but Gary was not. Right. Okay. Yep. Essentially, that's what I'm telling. But you. he doesn't even come in and be like, "Hey, you're still fucking alive." Like, what happened here? Okay. Um, okay. okay. You're so pissed that now they're back. <laughs> it's a nice issue. It was a lot of nice fighting. Uh, a lot of powerful people in this issue. A lot of powerful fighting in this issue. I'm um, excited to see where this goes. Um, I do like the expanding. Like these aren't like your normal everyday characters. They're like more. They're delving into the cosmic kind of Marvel. So that's where this book settles, and that's why uh, I feel like it feels refreshing. Marvel rather than same old, same old characters because we have characters we haven't seen in a while. So yeah, or we don't see often enough. Uh good eight. I, just, I agree with Nate. Solid eight's good. Uh, last book of the night we have Farmhand number seven, written and drawn by Rob Guillory. Mm-hmm. Um, this book's amazing. Uh, this is the second part of season two. Um, last issue, what had happened is Zeke and Jed and the two kids went on a fishing trip. Um, oh snap. Sorry, getting some news from our sponsor about some swampy things coming up. Um, so they were in this fishing trip and then. You know, the biggest concern in this entire book is if the seed that Jed uses to create all these things that can be replacements for humans, if they were to get beyond the farm. Yep. And it turns out that not only, like, the seed has gone beyond that farm. There's, like, a little pig, there's warthog a boar. There's thing, a boar. boar, that's trying that's charging at the kids and Zeke and Jed, and they climb into this tree but what they don't see is this tree is one of the hand trees uh, that we've seen at the farm before. But this is clearly outside of the farm. Um, so this next issue opens up. We don't see any of that. Uh, basically, uh, Zeke's trying out farming because he did say that he brought up an interest in actual farming. You don't see any weird creatures or no anything arms, inside. No no kidneys, no legs. Which is a good, like, opposing view. You know, like, obviously Jed's like, my freakish monster garden. And then... Zeke's like, well, I got my normal non-freakish garden. Like, normal things are here. Um, for right now. For right now. Um, in this issue, we also get Zeke finally coming back from, or Jed, I mean, coming back from the fishing trip. He's coming back to the office and realizes that there's a shit ton of people waiting there for him. His old buddy, who he is Tree. no longer friends with. Huh? Tree. His, son, his name was Tree. Oh, his name's Tree? Tree? Yeah, they call oh, okay. him Tree. Whatever. Um, they had this huge fight because we did get an issue back about the past, like a flashback being like why they're at odds with each other. And it was basically based off of um, Jed going too far, yep. being too obsessed with what he calls the God seed. So the one thing that is is told and it's repeated constantly is that for the seed to work and germinate and start doing what it needs to do, Jed 
needs to tell it to do so. By his voice, he has the power to do so. So we have yet to find out why it's spreading, who spread it. We do have uh, thoughts. I, I'm kind of thinking the mayor uh, might be a little corrupt. <clears throat> and we're finding out a lot of people are being um, infected by this. The thing we saw with uh, Andy or Andrea is they went and are burning trees. They're burning the infection, uh, making sure it's quarantined. Um, but as we know, animals are getting it, fish are having it. So it's, it's, it's not just in this little town. It's going to be nationwide, worldwide. I'm sure it's going to be maybe what we're building up to. I don't know what this book has in store for us. Uh, if, if, if you haven't heard it before, this book looks so good. It looks amazing. And like they put previews in for Chew mm-hmm. at the end and it's like, God, I want to go back and read that because it just looks so great. And, uh, yeah, this is definitely a book everyone should be on. It's it's a dark comedy horror, um, but it, it it's fun too though. I mean, there's fun things, there's funny things, there's scary things, there's like a lot of family ties and whatnot. Um, you know, I have I just thought of a theory that what if Zeke's voice is similar to his dad, so that he could control it, control it as well. The there's so my my favorite scene in this whole almost probably a whole book is Jed goes to a doctor's office, is go actually in a operating room. Uh, he's there to help a replacement kidney. And as he shows up, the, the doctor goes, oh, I'll just make the incision here. And he goes, no, you don't need to do that. Come here. And the doctor's like, I'm, I'm right here. No, I'm not talking to you. You watch this kidney plant uproot itself and walk over to Jed. Jed picks it up and tells it, do your thing, whatever it was, whatever what the words it was he says, but he tells it, do your thing. So now Jed is talking to the doctor, and the doctor goes, oh, I'll just make this incision. No, no, no. The, uh, the kidney plant will do its thing. It's going so to... You didn't do any... Because re- like Jed's provided them research on how to do this. Yep, he goes, oh, I've, I've read your thing. Well, did you, did you read this part? No, I must have skipped that. They get to another part. Oh, you must have skipped that as well, that you don't need to take out the old kidney... This new plant kidney is going to eat that plant, or absorb eat that kidney, it, absorb it, mm-hmm. and is going to put itself into the current blood vessel for it. The scariest thing, and yet I was so impressed. It's like, man, this thing is like surgical. Yes, I mean, I mean just amazing. Um, I honestly hope there's more things like this, just to give it that scare and yet very impressive factor. There is a huge attention to detail in this book. That is unlike most comic books. I mean, you know, like I think we can think of, uh, I can't remember which comic it was where that horrible smiley face was in the background. Is that Miles Morales, Spider Man number one? Or, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, where there's like literally someone with a fucking smiley face in the and background. He's like, he's like nine feet tall. Dot, dot yeah. smiley. So you won't get that with this book. There's detail in the background, details in the books in the background. There's details in the posters on the walls. There's details the post-it notes. everywhere. Like I'm, post-it I, notes. I read the post-it notes going, okay, what's going to be in this? So what am I missing? What, mm-hmm. what either telltale sign is there going to be? What other tie in to chew or other books that he's done is going to be, I just, this book is spectacular and it's for all, all things over the board. Uh, I'm going to give this issue a nine. I love six. Six was a 10, but this one is like just following up from all that. And, um, kind of doing the flashback thing kind of threw me off just because I was like, you know, oh, like, when they're back, they kind of like swept it under the rug and like, oh, well, this happened. It's like, okay, that's a different way to tell a story, but I just don't know if I think it worked as well. I I think for me, I'm going to give this a ten. There was nothing that I didn't enjoy. I will agree. The it was the transition where we didn't just pick up from them in the tree. Okay, it was weird as in the first half or whatever, but that surgery room was great. The The idea that things are st- starting to hit the fan. There's mm-hmm. people showing up who have been infected. We're going to find out from the corruption. Uh, I Read this book. This is one of those books that we told Marvin to get on to it. He's reading it. It's, it is great. Sorry. <laughs> that is horrible. <laughs> Marvin was just showing us that lovely smiley face in the background. <laughs> it's even scarier than I remember. It's it like, is a colon with a D. It's like Avengers. That man's playing Galaga. You didn't think we'd see it, but we did. <laughs> but yeah, that is all the books for this week. There we go. Farmhand number seven. Gideon Falls number 12. Uh, Black Badge number nine. nine. Uh, 
What did you have? Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy Galaxy number four, four. Daredevil four. Daredevil four and West Coast Avengers West 10. West Coast Avengers number 10. Ending that series. Uh, that is over. Get your comic books wherever you get them. Uh, support your local retailers, or if you need to get them online, no shame there. Everybody read, just enjoy comics how you want to enjoy them. Um, we're going to play a little game of sevens. I haven't played sevens in a while. So it's like a quick, fun game. Get a little of the blood flowing. Uh, I actually like this week a lot of comics. Last week, I think it was a, a shit week. <laughs> oh, my God. It was so boring. Maybe like you... You don't know until you read this week how shitty last week was. But the sad thing is that like the books that we had last week when I made the list was great. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that's exciting. Read the books. Wow, those were garbage. Yeah. This week I made the list. The only one that I regret is West Coast Avengers. We should have War of Realms. We should have done War of the Realms. But, but whatever. It's now the end, it's done. It's the end now of the whole done. thing. Yeah. Said it. We've tied it up. We're done with it. Yeah. We've got better books that are going to be coming for everybody to listen to. <clears throat> um. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh Last week, you know, I was like, Mirror Than a Show was like, oh, fuck, I can't get excited about comics anymore. This week, actually, was pretty good. So, uh, here we go. Seven's going to play it if I can find out my phone. This here. is the one where we got to pa- gotta describe it to you and I think so. Like taboo. <clears throat> Without saying the Without word. saying the name. Uh, Ant Man. So, shit. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Superman. Shit. Fuck. Why do I suck at this game? Seven rounds. Here we go. <clears throat> um, or how does it work? What we'll do is uh, Alex to you, uh, you to me, me to Alex, and then Alex to me, and then we'll go back around. Okay, cool. And we'll see uh, who does the best as uh, a taker. You're going to get points as a taker. I think that's fair enough. Obviously, don't fuck it up, or we're going to fuck it up for you. So as the answerer, who gets the points? Are we going to keep tabs? It tells you. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing two rounds of it. Uh, you get seven seconds to do it. The mm-hmm. faster you do it, the more points you get. Up to seven points, obviously, but I, I doubt you could do it in one second. Um, or even then, it would be six. But do you get how many questions? Uh, seven. Seven. Seven questions seven for, that each have seven, seven seconds. seconds. Yeah. Got it. Um, here we go, superheroes. Who are you asking? You're asking Alex first? He's asking me first, and then I'll ask you, then him. Mm-hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Here we go, superheroes. <laughs> Alex, you ready? <clears throat> get that voice ready. I don't even this bullshit. <laughs> Remember, you, so. you can't say anything on on what it says here. Um, I forget. It's, it's either quotations or underlines. Uh, if it has that, you can't say that word on here. Yeah. But otherwise, you can't say what it says. I forget what it is, but I don't know if I've ever done it. I don't remember. I don't, that. Think, I, I don't think any superhero ones have one. Other the other, other categories. And Ant Man. Yes. Ready? Here we yes. go. Start. God, I, hate this. I suck at this game. Uh, he eats planets. Uh, Galactus. Uh, we just read this book, number four. Uh, with Donny Cates. Oh, shit. What? Donny, Donny Cates. Cates. Guardians of the Galaxy. Not too late. Uh, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch plays this person. Doctor Strange. Uh, this person has a mind gem in his forehead. Uh, Vision. Uh, this guy is Batman's friend on the force. Commissioner Gordon. Uh, this lady is on the Fantastic Four. Sue Storm. What's her superhero name? Invisible man? Woman. Uh, this guy is uh, Tony's butler. Jarvis. Ooh, there we go. Uh, 18. We read this number four. Damn. <laughs> 18. Uh, I got five. I got zero on this Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know why. Donny Case, we just read this, and he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking Daredevil was written four, by Donny Case. 4, 2, like, 1, 2. So 18 points total. <clears throat> Are you going to panic and write on it? Write on your phone. I had like 10% battery. No, him. Just hit start yeah, when you're ready. Yeah, hold on. So you know here, Alex, remember, hit start when you're ready, and then when he gets it, you got to hit the card. If he doesn't get it, just let the card pass to zero. It'll go to the next one. Oh, or, I see. Don't, get, don't, don't, don't pass it. Yeah, you pass can't it. pass. He you have to let the it. time run out. But if he does get it, you push it to go to the next one. <clears> and <throat> that's when Feel it Feel free to push, though. But remember. Feel free to pass. that finger close. Remember last time? <clears throat> <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> go ahead when you're ready. I'll even have both thumbs ready. Ready? Hope you're ready. Uh, cosmic. Ghost Rider. Uh, your brother's favorite character. Spider-Man. Your favorite bad guy from Superman. Uh, Lex Luthor. Uh, he's metal. He's he's a mutant. Colossus. Uh, your favorite superhero's other name. Clark Kent. Nope. Superman. Sorry. Cal-Hal. It's a movie. That he's, sorry. I saw Man of Steel. Uh, bad guy from Batman Begins. Uh, Ra's al Ghul. Oh, Scarecrow. That's me, sorry. Uh, he's a Superman superhero ally. Made of metal. 
Oh, steal? Sorry. I saw cool. You got it, but you How many points? 21. You still do better than 21. me. 21. <clears throat> Man of Steel was the one that I screwed you over on. And I probably I cheated, got it. And I probably cheated when I said Scarecrow. I said he's scary. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Who cares? Right. Fear Toxin. Are you ready? Batman. Oh, yeah, me. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. For some reason, I was looking at Alex like, you ready, Alex? No. Nope. <clears throat> Was I fast enough this time? Go superheroes. <laughs> then hit start. I'm so scared. Um, fastest man around. Flash. Um, uh, screeching noise. Havoc. Silver. Uh, I mean banshee. Um, weeds kisses people. Poison ivy. Uh, my favorite superhero. Sup, uh, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> um. Fuck, what's his name? A horned guy, red. I can't think of a good name. Is this Or what his name is? Issue four of this oh, today. No. Oh, Hellboy. Um, T'Challa. Oh. Uh, Black Panther. Um, Ryan Reynolds did a shitty movie called... Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> the one you missed was... Uh, you got 23, uh, Daredevil. I fucked up on that one. No, that was 100% me. 23. I 23. said red horned guy. <laughs> 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 Maybe think of... What's his name in X-Men? The oh, the night, dad, Nightcrawler's, Nightcrawler's dad. As, Who's writing it right now? No. What? Who's writing Daredevil right now? Chibs of Darcy. Chibs of God, I couldn't think of his name. <laughs> 23. Donny Cates? <laughs> no? Donny Cates, who read this tonight? <laughs> I think maybe you were thinking Daredevil, and then you're like, fuck, that's not it. Yep. And then <clears throat> this guy over here just couldn't think of his name. Yeah. He was probably thinking Donny Cates. Yeah. Matt Murdock. Here we go. Superheroes. Once again, here we go. I'm going to give it to Garrett. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then he'll give it to you. And then you give it to me. Nice. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Chlamydia. Uh, this Superman grew up? Um, Smallville. Uh, this is Captain America's arch nemesis? Uh, Red Skull. Uh, this is Captain America. Uh, Steve Rogers. Uh, if you have abilities, you have? Powers. Superpowers. Uh, this Wolverine has it in his body? Uh, claws. Animantium. Uh, this is a guy who was in Daredevil. Uh, Punisher. Uh, this is where Superman grew up when he's older. Metropolis. Boom. Damn, this is where he grew up when he was older. <laughs> Twenty-five. <laughs> oh shit! I, don't know, I was gonna say I was gonna. I meant to say where he lives. That's pretty good that you got the saying. Punisher one. Damn. This guy. This guy was in Daredevil. That was a really. That was only like two scenes. Kingpin. <laughs> Kingpin that one random dude who died. <laughs> that would have been me. <clears throat> All right, Al. Here we go. <laughs> Are you ready? And I gotta get over here. Jeez, dude, you gotta like cough up a furball. Or I don't know what up? my deal is. So I'm... far, once again, every time we play this game, Alex has the worst score. <laughs> I really, I, and I don't know why I'm not. Good. I'm not good at giving him, and then I think too hard about the answers. Can you or... please use your verbs and your <clears throat> subjects a lot better. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. All right, ready? Drugged. All right, drugged. Got it. Here we go. Uh, um, Sue, Reed, Johnny, Fantastic Four. Um, Batman's lover, Talia Ghul, Other Catwoman. One. Sorry, I should use one. Uh, not Venom, but Carnage. Um, Blank Smash, Hulk Smash. Um, reading minds or moving things with your mind. Telekinesis or the other Tele- one. Telepathy. Yes. Sorry. Um, throws cards. <laughs> Gambit. Uh, uses a size. Two of them. Where's F A L Electra clothing. Electra. Okay. Uh, telepathy. <laughs> I'm going to blame Garrett on this one. <laughs> Move things with your mind. No, can he just do another one? <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> Couldn't think of it. How did he get? He got 20. I got 20. 20. <clears throat> so he's at 38. I lost. What's the score so far? So, so far, I have 46. Alex has 38. And Marvin has 23. 23? I had 25 last time. No, you had 23. I had 25. You had 23. He had 25 oh. the last time. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, when yeah. you did it the Sorry. other way. Just trying to add two points. <clears throat> trying to get that buffer. Ready? Yeah. Uh, it's in First Avenger. It's part of the gauntlet. What's it called? Uh, Cosmic Cube. Sorry. Uh, the movie with the whole team. From Avengers. Marvel. Uh, where it's underneath the mansion in Bruce Wayne's world. Batcave. Uh, what the Batman comics is called. Detective comics. My favorite characters, there's four of them. Reptiles. TMNT. <clears throat> uh, they're Doomsday Clock. Where are they? What other characters were they? Watchmen. 
Uh, Batman wears this around his waist. Uh, utility belt. <laughs> Dude, that was the longest explanation ever <laughs> for the Cosmic Cube. <laughs> What's the best way to do that one? 17. Sorry. That's me. Piece of shit. So, Marvin, <laughs> so final score. Don't worry, Alex. You still lost. Um, it goes Alex with 38, Marvin with 40, and me with 46. Damn. There you go. I'm looking at just seeing what I got. Team ones, I'm good at. <laughs> Here me. we go. In the first Captain America, what were they going after? Cosmic Cube. Muscles? <laughs> Or what did uh, what's the cat's name from Cat Marvel? Oh, uh, the Thorkel Goose. What goose? goose what a goose swallow? All right, that is uh, Sevens uh, Garrett's the winner. But just for fun, you both can answer this one. I'm going to give. Uh, this is movies action. Let's talk about okay. it. it's another uh, favorite topic on this show. Those action movies. So here we go. Let me take off my glasses because so you are, can't read. Those are dirty. No, they're dirty, so I can't see really see them. I got to go wash them downstairs. Um, I washed them in vinegar. I'm mm. just kidding. Disgusting. Yeah, that's horrible. Uh, here we go. Two, one. Uh, this is an Adam Sandler movie about the games. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Jumanji. Pixel? Oh, yep. This is uh, Antonio Banderas. He has a guitar case with a gun in it. Oh, uh, Once Upon a Time in Mexico? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, this is Johnny Depp. He uh, is on a ship. Uh, Pirates of Uh This is Zombie. He has Brad Pitt. Uh, War- World War Z. Z. Uh, this is uh, um, Keanu Reeves and um, The Matrix. Constantine. No, no, no. He jumps out of a plane. <laughs> Fuck. That was me. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he fights a guy, alien. Predator. Uh, Ar- Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's a robot. Terminator. Uh, second one. Total Recall. Uh, Judge Terminator recall. 2. Judgment Day. Judgment Day. <laughs> Total <laughs> Recall. <laughs> Ten points. There you go. <laughs> Pixels. You got the last second, but it moved on to the next yeah. one. Desperado. Desperado. Was the one. Wasn't the first one Once Upon a Time in Mexico? No, no. The first one's called uh, El Merachi. The fourth. Uh, the third one's called Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time. Time. Goddamn. Uh, Pirates Caribbean. World War Z. Point Break. You guys didn't get. Counter Reefs. Oh. I messed up. Well, we never already got that. I couldn't but. think of Patrick Swayze, so I just said jump out of a plane. <laughs> um, but I would say surfing, because like... That's yeah, more right. that's about. Them. I haven't seen Point Break, so I don't know. Oh, dude, Point Break is so are you serious? Fucking good, dude. I'm serious. Top five favorite movies of all time. Just kidding. It's not top five, but it's really good. Top ten. Uh, top twelve. <laughs> and when I say top 12? twelve, you obviously know where it goes. Uh, <laughs> Predator, uh, and then Terminator Two: Judgment Day. I like how you said when uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is fighting an alien. He's yeah. like, get it? He's an alien. Aliens and predators. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a predator of an alien. That's some, that's some f- horror humor for Wednesday you. WednesdayComics605 at gmail.com. That's the email address. At WednesdayComics, that's the Twitter address. At Alex Mistral, let him know what you're thinking about. At uh, Garot2188, <laughs> let him know what you're thinking about, too. At Marvin underscore Sogwell, let me know what you're thinking about, too. I use Twitter today for, I normally don't do this kind of bullshit, uh, to uh, have a complaint about a business because I felt like I had bad customer service. After work, I go to McDonald's, get a nice quick meal before I got to get home and get ready for this podcast. Uh, I get six-piece chicken nuggets and a sausage McMuffin with egg. Obviously, two things that should be in and out, mm. right? 30 fucking minutes. No, you're fucking lying. No. Seriously? I went through the drive-thru, and they go, hey, can you pull up to one of those reserve parking spaces? And so I pull in there, 10 minutes. Nobody I go, there's no way. It's got to be done. And then 15. And then in my head, I was like, do I go in? Do I stay here? What do I, I do? I go in at 15. Uh, at 20, I went in. Obviously, way more time than they should should I should have given them. And I go up to the thing, and I go, yeah, I just wondering about my food. Uh, you told me to pull up to the second drive through reserve thing to wait for it and spend 20 minutes. Uh, and the guy just goes, uh, yeah, we're busy. And I go, yeah, but 20 minutes? For fucking two things. Yeah. Or at least check in with For you. the one thing we know that you just throw in a fucking <laughs> microwave and give to people. I didn't say for fucking the two things. I just said yeah. 20 minutes. And then he gave a receipt to uh, the manager lady who was back there uh, going berserk because I f- uh, there was another lady that was in there. And she also went through the drive through and they, they didn't even put her order in. Uh, and then she looks and they didn't put my order in either. So uh, 10 more minutes and they gave it to me. Uh, that's so, it. And they just go, here you go. And I go. Nothing, like nothing. No discount, yeah. no nothing. 30 minutes. So I tweeted at McDonald's. I said, hey, so I you know what happened today. I said, I don't often do this. I just want to let you know. Did you give them the location? Yeah. I didn't even say, like, I want something from this. I just said, hey, I just want to let you know. Like, some, because I, I, I like going to McDonald's when I have a need a quick thing, like just to eat and get and make sure I'm not hungry. Here's this one right over here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so if that's the way it's going to be, can't go there anymore. So I just want to let, let them know. Yep. Top, top. 
Uh, <laughs> Facebook.com slash <laughs> USA Comics Podcast. But you'll find us like the page here with your friends. Um, it's a fun tangent to go on. Oh, I never told you guys something. I doubt he listens to this show because if he did, he would have responded quicker. Do you remember the first Supercon we were at? Yeah. Yes. And I gave away those comics. Yeah. And I said, hey, like our Facebook page, we'll pick somebody randomly. The guy messaged us and said, hey, you can send it here. And I was like, motherfucker, it's been two years. Yeah. <laughs> You're late, like, buddy. I didn't even know what was in that package that we promised <laughs> you. <Yes. laughs> um, uh, so if you are listening to this, motherfucker, you're not getting those comics. And if you're not listening to this, that motherfucker's not getting these comics. I'll tell you that much. Uh, it's been two years. You had like a month hey, to respond. thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, he obviously doesn't listen. Yeah. So we talked about him for like a good month. Be like, hey, you're going to like, I kept yeah. being like, hey, let us know. Let us know. Chime in. Let us know. Yeah. Uh, our friend uh, Steve uh, was a listener of the show, and he won the other one, and he let us know right away, and, we, and I dropped off from at once uh, at Rainbow Comics. So mm-hmm. that's good. Uh, this other guy, though, two years later, I think I think I'm within the w- realm of not being an asshole, not getting these comics two years later. Yeah. So um, uh, we have a book club here. Wednesday Comics League of Extraordinary Gentle People proudly presents Marvels, written by Kurt Wuzaik with art by Alex Ross. Boom. Uh, Alex, when would that be when uh, we're going to be uh, reading that? Well, most likely be around July 4th, but yeah. we're not going to be doing it around July 4th. Wow. Well, I mean, we'll do it somewhere in that We might range. pre-record potentially. What? So that comes out. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, possibly. And, uh, well, it's going to be a holiday, so. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah uh, Thursday, isn't it? The 4th of July. Yeah, it was a Thursday, right? Right. Uh, there we go. So make sure you read that comic and let us know what you think about it. 605-215-1849. That is the phone number where you can leave us um, uh, some comments on what you think of the book. Uh, RootsofSwampThing.com, your favorite source for all things Swamp Thing. Make sure to go there and support John Boyland. Um, uh, also visit him on Twitter at DC World Swampy or on Facebook.com slash Wednesday Comics. Yep. Facebook.com slash Roots of the Swamp Thing. Uh, that show's coming out May 31st pretty soon here. Uh, we just got some, uh, possibly some things in the work here. Who knows? Uh, during this podcast, I'm trying to find the message cause I want to read it exactly what he wrote, but I can't find it. You know, it makes me wonder is Thor's hammer heavy for Thor to lift? No, it's not. Like <sighs> if you, if you have to be worthy of, <sighs> I mean, does it still have weight though? If you're Thor, obviously not dude. It looks like a freaking pencil. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm looking at this, this picture. And one, his biceps are... Sorry. sorry I'm, I'll just give you something we can tell after the show. I just wonder if you think it's heavy Bro, stuff what are him. you talking about? This guy must delete his message or something. Anyways. Um, yeah, if you ever want something on the show, if you know their uh, giveaway, uh, respond right away. Otherwise, uh, two years is the limit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, guys, good show. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely good books. Good books, uh, for sure. Nice and quick. Last week, we had a two-hour show. This week, only hour and a half. So, getting back to normal. A lot of these books were like one scene though, or one or two scenes, so it wasn't not all of them, but like I would say, very like quick read. Daredevil tonight. and Black Badge were like a scene. We yeah, but it makes a difference when we like the book that we're talking about. True. The next time we do a show, we're gonna know what happens in Avengers Endgame. We're gonna do our reviews. So make sure to stick around for that. Uh, the week afterwards is the 150th episode of this show. 150 uh, years we've been doing this show, so uh, and we look good. For older than so dirt. tune into that uh, might be uh, yeah, you guys are a extravagant, uh, but 150 episodes uh, of the uh, forecast too. I think we've done 100 of those, so 250 about cent. a lot of content out there. Ding. We uh, do gauntlet. You, that's another. If you think about it, this show is usually handful. almost about two hours, so that's about 300 hours of that, and then about 100 100 hours of uh, the forecast. So, I mean, if we ever die. I think there's enough audio to recreate our voices for our robots. I mean, we say a lot of words. So, Alex, if you were a robot, though, like if they recreated you as a robot, would you kill criminals then? Like if you were a robot, am, term- am I a Terminator? No, RoboCop. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know because I just shoot him in the dick. I'm gonna be like, dead or alive, you're coming with me. Have Boom. you ever seen that parody video of that scene? No. Oh, these people just come out of the, keep coming out of the work. He just keeps shooting people in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty funny. Uh, friend of the show, uh, Aaron, showed me that because mm. he's never seen the movie, he's just seen that thing. And I was like, the movie's, the movie's actually pretty good. I love that movie. Uh, Robocop, uh, by the way, don't watch two or three. Stop at one. And don't watch that remake. That remake's a piece of shit, too. Mm. Um, yeah, just watch that. Watch that one. Mm, that is good. Uh, end game next week. And then, uh, whoa, Jesus. 
Endgame next week, um, three-hour movie. We'll give a review. We'll talk about uh, what happened. Also, not, no spoilers and spoilers. Maybe we'll have a, a guest on here. Who knows? But uh, until next week, Avengers Assemble. Oh. Wait, that's next week. That's next week. Yeah, right now, we don't assemble. We just cool say shit. We got we to team up together. Avengers, roll credits. We just have some You got swarma. Captain. You got Stark. Yeah. As a, as a, as a, Who else is gone? Where am I at? I'll, I'll be Thor. I'm hanging out with you somewhere. Um, with my sweet hammer. Last week, as a as a nod towards the Avengers, I had some shawarma. So Ooh. it's pretty good. No, on Tuesday, not last week. Nice. All right, Alex, close it out. I'm Avengers out. assembled. My name is Marvin. I'm Alex. I'm Garrett. Hey, everyone, keep turning those pages. <laughs> <laughs>